So as you can probably tell from the title, I've been busy remaking my game. Remember all that hard work I put into my project? Yeah? It's gone. Now was this a smart thing to do? Eh, probably not. If every engineer decided to completely scrap their project every time they thought they could redo it better, no one would ever complete a video game. Games are always a mix of good and bad code because the developers grow and improve over the course of making a game, but this decision didn't come out of nowhere. After my first video, I started working on the project again. I made barrels that exploded when you shot them, this cool blood splatter effect, and started making some cool progress on new multi-tile attacks. But the more I tried to add to the project, the more I struggled. And that's simply because I didn't build it very well. The project was originally going to be done after only one month, so I didn't use the best processes. And that last week in particular, I kept throwing stuff at a wall until it stuck. This is totally fine for short-term projects or game jams, but when I decided to work on this even more, I started to pay the price. Now my first thought wasn't, hmm, this is hard, let me start again. I initially tried to refactor the code. For those who don't know what refactoring is, it's basically tidying up code to make it easier to use. So instead of having the same method in five places, we have it in one central spot. So I refactored, and refactored, and refactored some more. In fact, I spent close to a month trying to make my code as reusable as possible, and I didn't get very far. This is because all of the systems were tightly connected, so when I tried to change one small thing in one system, three others would break. Ideally you want your systems as separate as possible and they just notify each other of the important changes. For example, how many places should you expect input from? Go on, have a guess. If you said one, you're correct. At least that's what I think. So how many did I have? That's right, seven. It was a nightmare and made it impossible to debug because it was hard to tell how I got to a certain point in the code. After a long time of being depressed every time I thought about the project, I decided to give myself a break and work on something completely unrelated. So when I came back, I decided I didn't want to waste any more time and I pulled the trigger to start again. It was very daunting going from an actual game, despite how garbage it was under the hood, to absolutely nothing, but it paid off. So what's actually changed? Well to be honest, probably not a lot from your perspective. But behind the scenes, it's very different. I learnt a lot from my original project, which made this second version much easier. I approached it in a much better way, building one system at a time and making sure it worked as intended before moving on to the next one. One of the first things I made was proper level loading, which was actually the very last thing I did in the previous version. The reason I did this so early was for consistency. Previously, whenever I tested, I'd get a random level, and some of these levels were so random that they were actually impossible for me to reliably test on. Whereas now, I have one consistent test level that is loaded every time and I can change it to suit whatever feature I'm testing. The main upgrade this version has is that it processes the level internally and breaks it up into relevant spawn data, and then sends that to the appropriate places instead of sending the entire text file to each major system. Like, look at this, why on earth should the unit manager care about this? The answer is, it shouldn't. This new version is much cleaner and is much easier to read. One of the main benefits I got from restarting was having less duplicate code. The perfect example of this? My navigation system, which uses A star to calculate the path within the grid. In the old version, I had four variations, which all did slightly different things, but ultimately used the same code, which is a waste. It also made it confusing which version I should use and where. Each instance had a specific use case and would throw errors if I used the wrong one. Whereas now, I've got one method, I pass in conditions that I want it to meet, for example I can have it go around objects for movement, or I can stop it on targets. It's the exact same functionality as before, in a quarter of the space, and it doesn't break, which is an added bonus. As I hinted at earlier, input also got a massive overhaul. Input could come from so many different places, and the state of the input manager could be changed from anywhere, which was just insane. Now it's much better. I have one central class for managing all input. It's responsible for determining what tile is being hovered over, the current selected unit, you get the idea. And no class can just get the current input. If any class wants to get information from the input manager, it subscribes to events that are internally triggered when the current input changes. Because of this, it now makes it so much easier to track the flow and game loop of the project. And the big reason why I restarted the project was the shocking structure of my world objects. Basically, I had one base class which did everything, move, attack, play sound, play animations, etc. The issue was when I started trying to add new things, no matter how small they were, they had to use this massive class. 
I tried splitting it up into static objects which didn't move, and dynamic ones which could. So a tree would be static because it can't move, which works fine. But only dynamic objects could be damaged. So if I wanted a wall that could be destroyed, it would need to be dynamic. But that means that it could move around the map, which is just stupid. I ended up with all of these different edge cases that the system just couldn't account for. To fix this, I leveraged interfaces. Interfaces are a bit like tags that each have their own components, which you can add to a class. Any class that has a tag must have those elements. For instance, a damageable interface will have current health and a take damage method. So anything with that tag, say a unit, a wall, a barrel, must all have a current health variable and a take damage method. And the bonus is, they can have their own versions of each component. Now when I try attacking something, I don't have to look for a unit or a specific type of object, I just need to check if the object has this damageable tag, and then tell it to take damage. And it doesn't care whether the object can move, or play sounds, or whatever else. And that pretty much catches us up to where the project was when we left. There were a bunch of other changes and optimizations that I made to the new version, but there's just too many to go into detail about. So was it worth it? Scrapping everything and starting from scratch? Definitely. I've set my project up properly this time, which has given me a much better foundation to build new features. So don't worry, I'm not going to be restarting again. And because I put in so much effort the first time, this version was much easier to make. I was able to redo almost everything in under two weeks without going at breakneck speed. Now there's still a few things missing, like action points, enemy AI, menus, combat, all that good stuff, but they're the things I want to have another look at now that I'm starting again. I'll be getting to that soon. In fact, I've almost finished off the next new feature, so be on the lookout for that. That's everything for this video, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, it would really mean a lot, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers everyone.